Howdy once again, it's Tubal Cain, and thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting my channel. And in this video, I'm going to tell you how to make and use copper sulfate layout fluid. Now, in countless videos, you've seen me do layout with uh, dicum bluing or, or dicum uh, red or whatever you want to call it, but, but a dye that, when used on the metal, allows you to do a layout and the lines show up real well. And there's really nothing wrong at all with this method, and I probably will continue to use it, but I'm just showing you the old way of doing it. Now, there are different companies that make this, and it comes at least in red and blue and maybe some other colors. I know Starrett has it, and Enco used to have it. You can buy it in bulk or the different size cans with the built-in brush. It is alcohol-based, so it will quickly dry. But it can be messy when you get it on your hands, and I always end up with some on my hands. But one thing I do not like about it is that it takes quite a while to dry, especially if you uh, do a sloppy job of application. So that's going to take a while. Sometimes I lay it near the furnace or something else, or, or I clean my brush of most of it before I apply it. But it's a good uh, product, and since it's alcohol based you can clean your bench or whatever you got uh, or you take it off of your work when you're done by using denatured alcohol they also sell this in sprays and they have dicum layout remover in a spray and in a quart can or a gallon can or whatever you want and it works great and i love the smell of it and i love the smell of this but that aside let's talk about some of the older archaic methods of layout this type of product is relatively new, that is within the last 60, 70 years probably, and not everybody had it, so a lot of machinists made up their own uh, coatings or whatever to enhance the work so you could see the layout lines. Now some people used chalk, some uh, used a chalk preparation that used whiting, I never have used that, but when I first started teaching, we were still using this in some of the shops, so I'm going to show you how to make copper sulfate layout fluid. It's pretty simple. Now nobody's ever going to do this, but I think it is pretty neat. And you see how well your lines show up. And I forgot to tell you that sometimes this flakes off, even though they claim it doesn't. But if, if your work is not real clean or there's rust or something, uh, it, it will sometimes flake off or if it was oily. But you do need to clean your work real well before uh, applying this. So let me show you the different formulas and how to find out that information. Just about every old textbook will probably show this and this was my dad's book and it was a 1936 copyright and this one was printed in 48 but in the layout section here in the very first soil well, in the second paragraph third paragraph they tell you how to make this uh, preparation and I'm going to show it here because it just shows up better but uh, they said to take uh, two ounces of water half ounce of copper sulfate and several drops of nitric acid well that nitric acid is nasty stuff and I do not recommend using it so I'm going to change the formula just a little bit here and show you what they have to offer in the machinery's handbook I have three or four copies of Machinery's Handbook, but this is an older one, 11th edition from 1942 during the war. But if you look near the end of the book, and I don't know if this will be in the more modern versions. I, I kind of doubt it because they do change that, but there are different ways of uh, coloring and coating metal here. But at the bottom there is that white coating I talked about, but I've never done that. But copper solution there is uh, what I'm going to use. So to make it easier to read I wrote it down here. This is the formula. Four ounces, of, that's distilled water. One ounce of blue vitriol. Well they don't call it that anymore. That's probably an archaic. But uh, there it is, copper sulfate, and there's the chemical formula and I bought that over eBay and that's about five or six dollars worth including shipping. And it's a powder. And then 10 drops of sulfuric acid. Well, where are you going to get sulfuric acid? Again, this is not for children. Acids are horribly dangerous. I've had received many burns from sulfuric acid when I was younger. 
but all I did was uh, draw a little bit of uh, battery fluid battery acid out of my uh, Minneapolis Moline tractor and I got some here on the bench but I don't need that much and I, I already made one batch of this and I'm gonna make that's four ounces we don't need that much so I'm gonna make another batch and I've halved the recipe to two ounces of distilled water half ounce of that blue vitriol and five drops of acid but sometimes you have to play around with the amount of acid because remember that battery acid is a very dilute sulfuric acid. It is not pure sulfuric acid by any means. By pure I mean I don't know what the concentration or, or how diluted it is but it, it's pretty darn diluted and it works great for removing warts. Alrighty let me get started here and mix a batch of this for you. So first of all take according to that formula that I have there's two ounces of distilled water put it in a container, a clean container of some kind my best drinking glasses. Have you seen them? No, I haven't. Check out on the patio. See if you left them out there. Okay. And then next, take your blue vitriol. And since you need a half ounce, I'm just guessing because really what it says in one of the books, just add enough of it so that you have a saturated solution. In other words, the water is only going to dissolve so much of it. It's in crystal form. It's rather pretty, isn't it? So I'm just guessing here, and it isn't that critical. So in it goes, and I might add more, and then I'm going to stir it up, and I would do not use something as steel. Use something inert, like glass stirrer or wood. And then you can hold it up and see if it's all dissolved. And it has, so I'm going to add just a little bit more to make sure I have enough in there. It's been almost 10 minutes since I put the red layout dye on, but look, some of it is still wet. Sometimes I play a flame over it, but that's one thing I do not like about the uh, alcohol-based ones. It just takes a long time to get ready for your layout. And you're... You, you can plan ahead and do your, your dyeing ahead, but it's, it's kind of a pain. I think most of you have gone through that. Now, I did not add any more, but after the dust settles, so to speak, I can see that there is some undissolved blue vitriol in the bottom. Now, that probably won't hurt a thing, but I certainly do not need to add any more. But what I could add is just a little bit more distilled water, and I would have to go back upstairs and, and, uh, and get some. So I'm not going to. And that, that'll be okay. Also, if you warm the water, it probably dissolves faster. Now, this is battery acid. Again, it's wicked. It's wicked. Wear your rubber gloves. Get your glasses on. And what I'm going to do to start with is just put six drops in there. Because remember, it's still diluted acid. No, I'm going to make it ten. And uh, you can use nitric acid, but, you know, again, I don't r recommend it. So I happen to have this nice little dropper. All right, that's about 10. Again, it doesn't matter that much. And if you plan on keeping this, find a jar such as this, but it's hard to find jar. Don't use plastic. It's hard to find glass jar. That's a baby food. Oh, that's old enough to where it's Heinz. Heinz hasn't made baby food since Methuselah died. All right, let me mix that up a little bit and then it's ready to use. Looking at yesterday's batch, notice what it did to the uh, tin plate. This is tin plated steel on the acid brush. So look at the reaction on that. It's almost flesh colored, but it's rather pretty. Now this will not work on aluminum. It's meant for steel and iron. Now I'm going to prepare a piece of metal I gotta find it here. I'm gonna clean it real well with a little uh, either steel wool or fine emery cloth. And if you don't do that, you're gonna get a real mottled finish. Now that probably doesn't really matter, but I just want it look pretty to show you. I've just spent 30 seconds cleaning this steel up with uh, 320 grit paper. Now this is denatured alcohol. Rubbing alcohol might work. I don't know. 
and I'm using the, the quicker picker up. I particularly like these that are the half sheets. Why is it you have to pay more for a roll of them that are perforated uh, twice as much as the regular ones? But see how much dirt there is on there. Now remember most cold roll steel, if it's been on your shelf or just been delivered, will have an oily coating on it. So it will not work. And I'm, I'm still picking up black residue. Now you can see it's not nearly as quick as just grabbing a can of this, is it? Okay, here's my newly mixed preparation and you could use a swab or an acid brush or but I would say don't get it on your hands but it would be a very mild acid but you're going to see how quickly it it uh, turns coppery and if there's any spots that do not turn coppery, it's uh, due to the fact that I missed it or I didn't get it quite clean enough. But it won't really affect the layout. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Now that's only skin deep. It's, you know, and it, it'll easily come off when you're done unless just, if I can find another piece here that I have played around with using the same, well, steel wool, will that take it off? Yes, but the 320 removes it much faster. So that's how you would get it off if you need to get it off. Now I'm going to wipe it off, the bounty towel. I sure didn't get the edges very well, did I? And uh, here's some alcohol, which... Is there any need to neutralize it? Probably not. And it's ready for the layout. That's what I did on the back side. My layout is just a mock-up to show you how nicely it shows up. Use a sharp scriber like this one I got from Randy. And it'll show up well with the dividers if you're using a, you need circles or arcs. Let's see what it looks like. There it is, ready to drill or center punch or whatever the next operation might be. I know I'm going to catch heck from the safety Nazis, but be sure and wear gloves. Wash your hands thoroughly after handling these materials. Do not touch your face. Wear safety glasses. Do not allow children to mess with this, even though it is a relatively mild acid, but there's always a danger from handling these uh, any kind of chemical. So, be careful in your work. So there's something new for you that might be interesting to some of you out there. Hope you liked this short video. This is Tubal Kane saying thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Please subscribe and like.